Then I want to say to the people that are watching this live on the internet, good morning. And as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. You know, sisters and brothers, the Lord had it written, get wisdom and knowledge, but with all you get and get understanding. And we have a lot of people with a lot of knowledge, but the understanding is missing in action. They don't understand that everything that the Lord do today or yesterday represents something that's going to take place tomorrow. God is not, see, God is not what you call a, uh, a, a community God. People think that when you come to the Lord, like, I, like a lot of my Hebrew brothers, you know, you got a little bit of little cliques and little groups and you sit around, but you're so busy educating one another until you forget to educate the people that you sent to educate. So, you know, we have to deal with the word the way it is because the word has been woefully mistaught. It's all that simple. Because nobody understands what God's purpose is. God's purpose is to create being just like himself. But when you tell somebody, say, well, you know, God is creating God. We ain't but one God. God is a unipolar word just like man is a unipolar word. One family but more than one member. And we have to realize that and realize what's going on with the word of God. We are supposed to be the priests. People are always telling me, well, you the chosen people. Chosen to do what? I do wonder. You are chosen to bring all of the sons of Adam to God. The ones that's lost, I don't care what their color is, what their nationality is, where they come from or what they look like. Everybody on the planet come out of Adam and Eve. Everybody on the planet came through Noah and his wife and his sons and their wife. So being that all of us come from the same place, then how is it that some of us figure that we are the only ones going to be saved? I have me a major problem with that. But what we're going to deal with, with understanding, though, you know, the Lord, people think that the Lord... It's taking us somewhere that we never been. It never occurred to us that maybe the Lord might be taking us somewhere where we was almost there. We got out the way, so we had to go back. So that's why uh, uh, I decided the Lord put it on my mind to do a lesson, pick this thing up from the beginning. The title of this lesson, From Eden to the Kingdom. From Eden to the Kingdom. From the beginning to the beginning. Because the Lord, when he created this man, he didn't create him just to see him get old and die, and that's it. And we're going to show you, sisters and brothers, he created man to live forever. That's why a lot of times you see in the Bible where the word, he's falling on sleep, or he's sleeping. Because death is merely a temporary pause in life, sisters and brothers. The Lord added death. And a day going to come when he's going to remove death. Because God told you, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of the living, not the dead. And that seemed to have gone by the whole planet. But we're going to pick this up. <clears throat> in the Garden of Eden, when the Lord is talking to this man and created this man. Let's go in Genesis, the first chapter. And we're going to start it from there, and we're going to see, we're going to show that, look, you're on your way to one place. That's the kingdom of God. And you're going to get there. But you got to decide what side of the kingdom you're going to be on. Mm -hmm. That's the part that people don't know about. Because uh, if God was going to save you in spite of yourself, you wouldn't have this Bible here. Right. Wouldn't be no rules. Wouldn't be no instructions. In fact, you don't need the Bible. He's just born, get to a certain age, boom, he changed, and that's it. Don't work like that. Genesis 1 and verse 26. We're going to start with what God said about man. 
He's going to bring man into existence. 1 and 26. Go ahead. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Uh-huh. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, uh-huh. and over the fowl of the air, uh-huh. and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. See, now when man made, God made man, he made him in his physical image. If we was in his spiritual image, then we would be keeping the law. But he made us in his physical image, but he did something with this man. He put him over everything else that was created to let this man know that he was created to run something. And to tell you that man is created to be over the works of God's hand. And God's hand made a whole lot of things other than just animal system, brother. That's right. But he let you know, I'm going to create you in my, in my image, and I'm going to give you some power and authority. Go ahead and read. 27. So God created man in his own image. Uh-huh. In the image of God created he him. Go ahead. Male and female created he them. That lets you know that male and female is created in God's image. Physically. Go ahead and read. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Uh-huh. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So it's to be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Replenish means to repopulate, sisters and brothers. Now let me say this real clear because I get people all over the internet. They hear me say something and they always make some out. Replenish. I didn't say uh, Adam is the second man. Adam is the first man. But Adam wasn't the first thing on this earth. Where you got? What do you think you got the dinosaurs from? They wasn't in Adam's creation. No. That's why you don't see a Tyrannosaurus Rex running around here. No. You don't see a Pterodactyl flying over here. You understand? You don't see any of these great lizards running around. And that let me know that they was not in Adam's creation because there was, if they was in Adam's creation, they would be here today. Yeah. Because the Lord was very careful to have Noah bring over all the animals yeah. on the ark. So I should see me a Tyrannosaurus Rex running around here. But anyway, I just wanted to make the point, replenish the earth means to repopulate. It didn't say replenish the earth with what it was already, with, with man now. You replenish it, you the first thing that come on that was called man. Not monkey. Okay, read it. 29. And God said, Behold. I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth. Uh-huh. And every tree in the which is a fruit of a tree yielding seed. Go ahead. To you it shall be for me. No, he's telling you for you it shall be for me. That means it's for food. We're talking trees and vegetation here. Right. Go ahead and read. And to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth uh-huh. wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me and it was so. So now, not only did the Lord give every man, make them vegetarians, also the beast was vegetarian. Mm-hmm. There was no meat eating going on at this time. Why? It's because death had not been introduced into the creation system, brother. Right. In order to eat something, you'd have to be killed or die. So man was a vegetarian, and all the animals were a vegetarian. In the beginning. Now let's go and see how the Lord brought this man in existence. Let's go into Genesis, the second chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 9. Genesis, the second chapter, and verse 9. Because the first chapter, sisters and brothers, the blueprint. He tell you he created man. Now he's telling you how he created man, and people don't even understand this. And it's so simple. Verse 7, go ahead. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground Uh and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So now the Lord dug you out of the ground, and he breathed into your nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. He didn't say put a soul inside of you. He said he became. What does became? That's the psalm told of you. What did he put in you? Breath. And when he gave you this breath, you became a living soul. In other words, that mobilized you. And you can always prove the word of God. See, people are talking about creationism and evolution. I said, you can prove the word of God. It takes breath for this brother to breathe. Because God put it in him when he dug him out of the ground. Oh, yeah. So I do him like you do addition. One and one is two. How do you check yourself? Take one from two and what do you got? 
Take breath from Cornell and what do you got? A dead soul. It's all that simple. See, that's how simple the word of God is, sister and brother. Man is complicated. Go ahead and read. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. Uh-huh. And there he put the man whom he had formed. Go ahead. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Now, these are the trees that's out of the ground, but there are a couple more trees in the garden. Go ahead and read. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden. Uh-huh. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So you had two trees and that didn't go out of, uh, grow out of the ground. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we know who they are, sisters and brothers. Mm-hmm. Tree of life, we're going to show you, is Jesus before he became Jesus. This is what people don't understand. Jesus is the only God that we have ever dealt with. Right. I have people say, I see, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, see, I like that God. I don't like that God of the Old Testament because he is harsh. You hang around here, you're going to find out that's the only one you ever dealt with. Mm-hmm. So now, God gave you one commandment. And all Adam had to do was keep that simple commandment, and we wouldn't be dying. Skip down to verse 16, and let's look at it. Verse 16. One simple commandment, sister and brother. See, man got a problem. We don't hear well. Read it. Go ahead. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Uh huh. Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Go ahead. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it. Now he told them you can eat of every tree of the God. The tree of life was in the God. But he said of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Why? For in the day that thou eatest thereof, Uh thou shalt surely die. In the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. So what if man had never eaten of this tree? There wouldn't be no death. No death. Death was not automatic. I keep telling people all the time, death was added to Adam's creation. But man got a problem. He have obedience problem. <clears throat> Even today. And let's look and see what this man did. Let's go into Genesis, the third chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Genesis 3 and verse 1. Go ahead. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Uh-huh. And he said unto the woman, Yeah, have God said ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, uh-huh. but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. So now, this woman understood what God meant, didn't she? Oh, yeah. She quoted that. Look, sisters and brothers, when the God gave that directive to Adam, the woman was still a real. But Adam apparently instructed her. But he said the serpent was most something than the beast. We are not talking about a snake that crawls around on the stomach, sisters and brothers. No, sir. If you want to know who this serpent is, Go to 12th chapter of Revelation and look where he got thrown out of heaven and he gave all of his sight. That old serpent, Satan the devil, dragon. The devil was in there because God made us a free agent, sister and brother. He didn't make us robot. Because no. if he wanted to make us a robot, all he had to do was remove the devil and we wouldn't have had nobody to listen to but him. But no, he is creating beings to be like him. And you need to have some kind of latitude. You have to be able to make the right decision. Because with the power that we're going to have is we can't even describe it. So you need power. You need knowledge. You need to be able to think and make the right choices. Go ahead and read. Four. And the serpent said unto the woman, Uh Ye shall not surely die, for God doth know. Then in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. I hear that all the time at every funeral. That's not Mr. Jones there. He's made his transition. He's looking down from heaven on you smiling. I keep looking at this Mr. Jones in the box. He looked just like he did a week ago when I was talking to him. Now, you're going to tell me not to believe my lying eye. God don't work like that, sisters, brother. We're going to show you that. 
We're going to see if Mr. Jones uh, uh, was in the box or have he made his homecoming. I tell people all the time, before you can tell, homecoming means you go back to where you came from. So until, and when you say he has made his homecoming, that tell me he don't know where you came from. The last thing I, time I read, God dug us out the dust of the ground. Ain't that right? Yes, out the yes. ground. So I said, wait a minute. Let's wait till we get to the graveyard. Put them in the grave. Now they've made their homecoming. Mm-hmm. Bible going to bat us out. What verse are we? We're six. Go ahead. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes and uh-huh. the tree to be desired to make one wise. Go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. Uh-huh. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And we're not talking apple here, sisters and brother. Man, so basic until he thinks that everything to eat means all the time something that you consume in your mouth. Right. The biggest eating you do in your life is through your eyes. You read through your mind. You hear. You understand? Mm-hmm. You consume knowledge. So, she liked what Satan's conversation was. Yeah. She ate it, and then she took it to her husband. He wasn't even there. Nope. Go ahead and read. Seven. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. So, when he gave them, the eyes of them was open, open, both uh, their eyes was open, and they knew that they was naked. So, you ate an apple, and you got educated. <laughs> I say it all the time, sister and brother. You know, my, you know, a couple of weeks ago, my oldest granddaughter uh, graduated from the uh, uh, University of Arkansas. I personally paid her tuition, written all that stuff, because I said, this is mine. I'm going to do this on my own. I could have saved <laughs> thousands of dollars. If somebody had told me all I had to do was go down to Jewels and get me a bucket of apples and gave it to her, bam! I done saved a minimum of $80,000. You understand what I'm saying? When I could have gave her a 15 cents apple. <laughs> what? When your eyes are open, that means you understand. Mm-hmm. What makes you understand something when somebody informs you of something? Ain't that correct? Yeah. See what I'm saying, sisters and brothers? It's time for us to grow out of fairy tale and let's become adults. Right. Like Paul said, when I was a child, I did childish things. But when I became a man, I put away childish, childish things. Yeah. You understand? Oh, yeah. It's time for us to grow up in the Word of God. So she ate, and she gave her own ate, her husband ate, and then his eye was open. First thing, what did they recognize? Go ahead and read. Seven, and they knew that they were naked. How would you know you was naked unless somebody told you you was naked? Go ahead and read. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Uh-huh. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Uh-huh. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. You mean... God was in the Garden of Eden? Yes. This is what people don't understand. Once you get some understanding, God has always wanted to be among his creation. But he don't want to bring you up there where he is. He wants to come here where you are. That's right. He said, and when they heard his voice in the garden, they hid themselves. And God called unto Adam. What verse? Nine. Go ahead. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, uh-huh. Where art thou? Uh-huh. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. Now what the Lord said? First thing come out of his mouth. Go ahead. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Who told you that you was naked? Uh-huh. That's the only reason Adam and Eve, because he know he didn't tell them. Who told you that you was naked? Then he got to the eating thing. Go ahead and read. Has thou eaten of the tree where have I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? He said, have you eaten of the tree I told you not to eat? Have you done that? You, can, you couldn't even ask God, couldn't he? Go ahead and read. And the man said, the woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I did eat. So now this is the first time you ever seen the first man hide behind the woman. You're going to get the woman. You gave me a flawed product. But no, if man has stood his ground, 
the woman would be dying because the book said by one man mm -hmm. death uh, uh, sin came and then death by sin and then he named him in Adam mm -hmm. because the Lord gave the man the authority yep. he could have told her like Job told his wife woman you talk like one that's a fool yep. you understand yep. shall we receive good at the hand of God and not receive evil Job got recovered didn't he yep. he didn't die he saved his wife and the Lord gave him some brand new children God can take them and he can give them more, can restore them so right away Adam hid behind the woman and God didn't go with it. Let's skip down to verse 17. He passed sinners on everybody, but we're dealing with Adam's sinners. Verse 17. Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Because you have hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. See, this is a great mystery here. Adam never talked to Satan. The woman talked to Satan. And the woman took the story and, you know, and, and, and uh, uh, Adam went for it. Satan had come to the man, he said, you get out of my face. But he went to the woman because he knew the woman's greatest, we a man's greatest weakness, weakness is a woman. We all try to act like we're strong and this and that there. But hey, I'm going to tell you like it is. He knew he couldn't get at him. So he got the woman and sent her and she got it. Yeah. He said, look. Because you listen to the voice of your wife. Go ahead. And has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Uh -huh. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Cursed it's, is the ground for thy sake. Go ahead. In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. That means you're going to have to go to work. Oh, yeah. Skip down to verse 19 and go ahead. We don't have time to read all this. Go ahead. In the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread. Now, how do you make a living? By working, don't you? Yeah. So I'm telling you, see, this is what people don't understand. Look at the simplicity of the Lord. Mm -hmm. How is it that we earn our bread? Work. By the sweat of our face. We work. This is some accurate stuff to be, uh, 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 you know, uh, that uh, uh, evolution is called a conjecture. Right. By the sweat of your face shall you earn your bread. Go ahead. Till thou return unto the ground. Till you go to heaven. <laughs> return to the ground. Till you return to the ground. Go ahead and read. For out of it was thou taken. Uh-huh. For dust thou art, and unto dust shall thou return. Now, don't you think that God know where we came from, and he know where we going? Oh, yeah. See, I'm dealing with simplicity here, sisters and brothers. That's why I'm talking about the simplicity of Christ. Real simple. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to get salvation. All you have to be able to do is read and obey. That's it. How the hit you was taken. Now look, we got, and so look, I'll show you what happened now since this man had been tainted. Skip down to verse 22. Verse 22. Go ahead. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become as one of us to know good and evil. Now Satan didn't lie about that, did he? No, no. But then he just told the woman a half truth. Finish it. And now, let's he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Uh huh. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. He said, now, let's he put forth his hand and eat of the tree of life and live forever. He put him out to God. Yeah. You taint it not. I can't have no person that can't obey a simply simple commandment with the strength that I got. That'd be a real problem. Oh, yeah. He created the angels, and a third of them went bad. Mm -hmm. What would happen if he created, when, when he got him a whole crop of brand new gods? Like Jesus, when he come out of the grave, he said, All power in heaven and in earth is given into my hand. Oh, yeah. Do you realize the magnitude of all power? God have him a problem. He have a real problem trying to cast you into the lake of fire. Well, brother, you know, you shouldn't be talking like that. See, that's the problem. You have to have some understanding of what, you, what you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubim, uh -huh. and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Now, he drove out the man, and he put the cherubims around him, 
Because he said to keep the way of the tree of life, sister and brother. Mm -hmm. That man could not become what he created him until he fixed his mind. God called his man something ain't nobody paid no attention to it. Let's have a look at it. Let's go. Since this man then sin against God, he going to die now. And let's show you that God made that statement. Let's go into Psalms, the 87th chapter. Psalm chapter 82. See, sisters and brother, that's why I said last night, last week, when brothers run around talking about all oh, everything is pagan, but the shoes that you wear. I said, if you can't read it, don't say it. We are Israel, the Israel of God Bible study class. We read the book. And when people get mad and try to take issue with me, hey, you ain't taking issue with me. You're taking issue with the book. That's why I don't get mad at you. I just sound mad when I talk. <laughs> Psalms 82. And we're going to start at verse 1. We're going to pay attention to what's said here in this 82nd chapter of Psalms, sister and brother. See, because people don't pay no attention. They got this great big Bible that's been in your house all of your life. And nobody bothered to say, I think I'm going to read this thing. 82 and 1. Go ahead. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Whoa. Who are these mighty? Who are these gods that he's talking about? He calling you in your for in your in your final state. Go ahead and read. How long will ye judge unjustly and uh -huh. accept the persons of the wicked? That's the question. What happened in the Garden of Eden? Accept the persons of the wicked. Adam and Eve judged unjustly and they accepted the person of Satan. You can't get no more wicked than Satan, can you? Now, because of that, God brought and put death on the table, and the earth is out of order. Skip down to verse 5, and he tell you this. Verse 5, go ahead. They know not. Uh-huh. Neither will they understand. Go ahead. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. It's out of course. Yeah. You ain't supposed to have sickness and death and all this kind of carnage on here. No. It's out of course. Look what the Lord said. Go ahead and read. I have said ye are God. I have said ye are God. So if God have said ye are God, then what is it? God. This is their final state. That's why I know that death is a temporary condition. You're going to get that. Mm -hmm. Maybe you ain't going to like what you like. Or maybe you ain't going to like what you are if you don't do it right. But you're going to get there. I have said, ye are gods. Go ahead and read. And all of you are the children of the Most High. And all of you are children of the Most High. Go ahead and read. But ye shall die like men uh -huh. and fall like one of the princes. Who's dying, sister and brother? All you got to do, wait a minute. We die. Oh, yeah. Is he going to die like men? Like men, because that's what he made us. Mm -hmm. This is absolute truth. People, well, you know, it don't mean that. I said, show me one man 150 years old. I ain't going to ask you to show me five or six. Show me one. They ain't there. They die. Why? It's because they ate of the wrong tree, sisters and brothers. That man just got worse and worse. Let's go into Genesis, the sixth chapter. Go back to Genesis, the sixth chapter. We're going to walk this thing to the kingdom. We're going to walk it to the kingdom, sisters and brothers. We're going to let the book show you. So now, death has been put on the table. Now, things can die. First thing that we could have kept reading, the first thing that God did was went and made Adam and Eve coats of skin to cover their nakedness. Where do you think he got the skin from? Animals. I'll let you know. But the Lord says, absolute, the wages of sin is death. Yeah. And don't nobody realize they done took death off the table now. Genesis 6 and 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Uh -huh. And daughters were born unto them. Go ahead. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And they took them wives of all which they chose. These are not talking about... 
angels and men, sister and brother. Angels don't procreate. No. Lord, let you know that. This is talking about the sons of Adam and Seth looked up on the sons of Cain, which the Lord had disinherited. You hang around here, we'll show you that. Mm -hmm. Can't teach you everything in one set. No. And they took as much of them as men as for wives, so Cain's daughter was like their daddy. They was wicked. Go ahead and read. Three. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, uh -huh. for that he also is flesh. Yet his days shall be a hundred and twenty years. Right away he cut his lifestyle down. Oh, it didn't come into play right away. There's some people live longer. But eventually, how many do 120 years now? He said, my spirit shall not always strive. That shall not always walk with man. And I'm going to show you, and he's talking about his word, sister and brother. In other words, man is not going to always walk into my word. These women going to change their mind. Yeah. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. Uh, verse 5, brother. Verse 5 and go ahead. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth. Uh -huh. And that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. That sounds like a day, don't it? Yeah. But the whole thing, he saw that. That's what happened. He knew this was going to happen to this man. Go ahead and read. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. He says he was sorry he had done this. Go ahead. And it grieved him at his heart. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth. Go ahead. Both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air. For it repenteth me that I have made them. He said, I'm going to destroy them all, sisters and brothers. He's going to kill them all. Mm. This can't be Jesus, can it? I'm going to add something to this lesson right now. Keep your finger here. Now let's go into J uh, 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 St. John, the fifth chapter. I want to let you know who's talking here so you can get that foolishness out of your mind. In Christ, everybody is, is going to get saved. We're going to see. Uh, this is something, I don't ever do this, but I just got to add this. St. John 5, and we're going to read one verse. Verse 37. Because I want you to understand who you're dealing with. So when we continue to talk, how you're going to know who, you, who you're dealing with. Sometimes we need to know who we're dealing with. Oh, yeah. Then that will change the way we approach him. 5 and 37. 5 and 37. Read. And the Father himself, uh -huh. which have sent me, Go ahead. have borne witness of me. And the Father himself, which have sent me, have borne witness of him. That's Jesus talking. Go ahead and read. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. How much time does any time cover? All time. If that's the case, then, who we dealing with back here? Jesus. See, it's all that stuff. You see how understanding comes? Uh -huh. Simplicity. Now, let's go back. Now that we know who's talking here, he'll come in the flesh and he's a changed being. Uh-uh. What verse did we leave off at? Uh, we had eight now. Go ahead and uh, verse eight. You should have it. I told you to keep your finger here. Go ahead and read. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Skip down to verse 13 and let's see what God said to him now. This is Jesus here that's talking. If you ain't heard the voice, God, uh, the Father's voice, we know this is Jesus, don't we? Yes, sir. Boy, I love the simplicity of, this, of Christ. Me too. 13, go ahead. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh has come before me, uh -huh. for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. I'm going to destroy this man with the earth. It is full of violence. Go ahead. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Uh -huh. Room shall thou make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. Now I want you to make me an ark. And he tell him how he want him to do it. Because I'm going to do something here. Skip down to verse 17. Verse 17. And go ahead. And behold, I, even I do bring a flood of waters upon the earth uh -huh. to destroy all flesh. Uh -huh. Wherein is a breath of life uh -huh. from under heaven and everything that is in the earth shall die. Thus says Jesus. Yeah. Go ahead and read. But with thee will I establish my covenant. And thou shalt come into the ark, thou and thy sons and thy wife and thy sons' wives with thee. Uh -huh. And of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shalt thou bring into the ark. Go ahead. To keep them alive with thee, 
they shall be male and female. Now, in order to procreate his thing, he made them male and female. Yes. If you don't have a combination of male and female, like the Lord said in order, you cannot have children and replenish the earth. Now, everybody running around talking about same-sex marriage and this and that. You know, God loves everybody. Yeah! Give me two women and make a baby with one of them. Give me two men and make a baby with one of them. That means God knows what he was talking about, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Click. Somebody likes to be going on. Mm-hmm. What verse? Uh, we finished 19. Skip down to verse 22. And what did Noah do? Thus did Noah, according to all that God commanded him, so did he. Now, he did everything that God told him. Yep. It was more than just two each. It was seven of clean, but then that's another lesson. Now, let's go and see what happened now when the Lord, because the Lord flooded the whole earth. He drowned everything but that, but that which was on the ark. Now, I'm going to show you what he did when he brought him off the ark. Let's go into Genesis, the ninth chapter. Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. Start at verse 1. Go ahead. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Uh Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Go ahead. And the fear of you and the dread of you shall be upon every beast of the earth. Uh Uh-huh. And upon every fowl of the air. Uh, And so he broke the covenant with man and animal. So all of a sudden, now all of them going to be scattered you. Beasts of the field, fowls of the air. Go ahead and read. Upon all that move of upon the earth and upon all the fishes of the sea, into your hand are they delivered. Go ahead. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb have I given you all things. Oh, so now he didn't put meat on the table, did he? Yeah. Every moving thing shall be meat unto you, yeah. even if I have given you the herbs. As food. Mm-hmm. So now he put meat on the table. How can he put meat on the table? Because death have been introduced to the creation, sisters and brothers. That's right. Go ahead and read. Four. But flesh, with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. In other words, don't eat the blood. You're supposed to pull the blood out. Yeah, God, well, I got me a nice, rare steak. And you, boy, when I cut it, the blood running, you're breaking the law. That's right. The Lord said, don't do that. Go ahead and read. And surely your blood of your lives will I require. At the hand of every beast will I require it. And at the hand of man and at the hand of every man's brother will I require the life of man. In other words, I'm going to require man to kill man. Man is going to judge this man. Also, every beast is going to kill man. That's why somebody get a pet tiger and he get all grown. This is my pet tiger. When he get big enough, he get a little inkling and he jumps and eats you. Like the people asked some years ago, they had a python, a pet python. The baby come up missing. Snake ate him. Now they mad at this old evil python. The snake is not evil. He was just having dinner. You are foolish for having a wild animal in your house. You know, like he had these, these, these Siegfried and Freud, these two guys with them white tigers and all this here. One day, that white tiger jumped one of them and drug it behind the stage. They had to get him off it. Yeah, he been paralyzed ever since. Yeah. I don't know why. You know, he, he attacked me. He must have been frightened. No, he is wild and he got hungry. <laughs> you see how it is with the word of God? The word of God is absolute. He says, so now, so if you smart, you don't have wild animals in your house. Right. So now, let's see what Noah them did. Genesis 10 and verse 1. Now, who came over with him? I want to see how many people were in the ark with Noah. Go ahead and read. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah. Uh-huh. Shem. Ham and Japheth. Uh huh. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Now, these are the three sons of Noah Shem, Ham, and Japheth. That's why people marvel sometimes when they go other places and people have and know about God and they ain't been attached to nobody. You know why? Because you have the same forefathers. 
all of them pass some parts of the word of God down. Because everybody coming out of these three brothers and they three wives. And the book will tell you that. Skip down to verse 32 and it'll tell you that. Verse 32. Read it. These are the families of the sons of Noah after their generations uh-huh. in their nations. And by these were the nations divided in the earth after the flood. By these was the nation divided in the earth after the flood. Mm-hmm. When you get some real understanding, hating another people because of their nationality or their color becomes real hard to do. Yeah. Because that is your sister. That is your brother. If they act ill of towards you, that means that they are uninformed. If you can't change them, then be smart and stay away from them. Yeah. But don't hate them. <coughs> so now, everybody on this planet came out of Noah and his three sons. Everybody. Yeah. And they were all operating like one family. Let's go into the 11th chapter of Genesis. <laughs> I'm just showing you, sisters and brothers, how this thing is so in order. I mean, it is in order. 11th chapter of Genesis. And let's start at verse 1. Genesis 11 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the whole earth was a one language and a one speech. Uh huh. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. I mean, everybody spoke the same language. And they found a place and they dwelt there. And what did they do? Go ahead and read. And they said one to another, go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. Uh huh. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Go ahead. And they said, go to, let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Uh huh. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. This man always wanted to do just the opposite of what God wanted him to do. Yeah. Then they're going to make him a name. They're going to make him a tower and everything so won't nobody get disconnected. God didn't want that. No. Go ahead and read. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men build it. Uh huh. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one. And they have all one language, and and this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. He said, now they're people of one. They're everybody's thinking the same. You know, when people say God is one, that means that they're on the same wavelength. They don't mean it's one person piled into two. The whole earth. Was that one? That means everybody had the same mindset. We're going to build this tower and we're going to make sure that we don't get scattered because we sisters and we brothers. Go ahead. Seven. Go to. Let us go down there, confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. Ain't that something? Yeah. Let us go down there and we're going to confound their language. Mm-hmm. If we, they don't understand one another, everybody's going to think the other guy is crazy. You want to get away from crazy, so you're going to catch up with the people that's got sense like you and speak the lang- same language. Y'all go migrate, and everybody say, hey, let's get away from them crazy people. And they're looking at you saying, let's get away from them crazy people. That's the way to scatter. Yeah. You don't hang around crazy folks. You sitting at the bus stop, sitting there, I ain't buying your guy, get on there and talking to himself. Then all of a sudden, he slap himself on the face, and he do this here, you, he's about to... <laughs> <laughs> and you go because you don't hang around crazy people. That's how the Lord scattered the whole life. Go ahead and read. Eight. So the Lord scattered them abroad from this upon the face of all the earth, uh-huh. and they left off to build a city. Go ahead. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So Babel is because everybody was babbling to one another. So that's how the Lord did it. They got away from one another and scattered them all over the face of the earth. Go ahead and read. These are the generations of Shem. Uh Shem was a hundred years old and begat Arphead two years after the flood. Now, because we're going to run this down to Abraham so we can deal with Israel. We can't deal with all people, but we're going to deal with the people of the Bible. And we're going to end up dealing with all people again. So now, Shem, children, are the people that's called Shemetic or Semitic. Go ahead and read. And Shem lived after he begat Arphead 
500 years and begat sons and daughters. Now skip now to verse 26. Let's see what has come out of Shem. Go ahead and read. And Terah lived 70 years and begat Abram, Nahor, and Haran. So now this Abram became Abraham. Go ahead and read. Skip down to verse 31. 31 and go ahead. And Terah took Abram his son and Lot the son of Haran his son's son. Uh huh. And Sarah his daughter in law. His son Abram's wife. Uh huh. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Chaldees to go into the land of Canaan. Uh huh. And they came into Haran and dwelt there. So they went into the land of Canaan. That's why our forefathers, that's the land that God gave Israel. Yes. The land of Canaan. But well, let's go into 15th chapter of Genesis and we're going to deal with Abram. Because this is the one that God made a covenant with. Genesis 15. And we're going to start at verse 1. Genesis 15 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, uh -huh. Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Go ahead. And Abram said, Lord God, what would thou give me, seeing I go childless? Uh-huh. And the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. He said, look, what you going to give me? I ain't got no child. I don't have nothing to pass it on to. Go ahead and read. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed, and lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And he wasn't his son. Go ahead and read. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir, uh -huh. but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. See, Abraham, ha Abraham had to know that because the Lord had already told him before he went to that thing with Ishmael. But go ahead and read. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. Uh -huh. And he said unto, the, unto him, so shall thy seed be. He had one child. He said, but your seed going to be like the stars of the heaven. Because Abraham, whose name is Abram, whose name was changed to Abraham, is not only the father of a lot of physical people, he is the father of the faithful. Yes, sir. Because everybody that has have faith, they are the children of Abraham. Everybody that believed God. Go ahead and read. Six. And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Now he believed it. So skip down to verse 13. Verse 13. And go ahead. And he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not there, uh -huh. and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Now this is talking about Israel. He said, Our seed going to be a stranger in the land. And they're going to serve them, and they are going to afflict them four hundred years. And everybody, you know, in the early days, some of them still teaching it, that when we got to America, this is the four hundred years. The four hundred years and came and passed happened. We're still here. Yeah. Oh, well, we spiritually free. Yeah, right. It's just like the man that, that turns to God in jail. If he's in there for life, I don't care how righteous and free his mind is, his body is still locked up, ain't it? That's right. Go ahead and skip down to uh, uh, verse 16 and read. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. And the, he already told you what time when the 400 years is going to expire. In the fourth generation. You got Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and his sons. It was his sons uh, 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 that produced the children that came out of Egypt. He told you the fourth generation. Yep. Now, when they had caught Stephen, because he was disputing with somebody, he ran this same thing down to him. He let them know. I know that we Israelites, we come out of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he ran this whole story that God gave Abraham. Let's go look at it. Let's go into Acts, the seventh chapter. Because we need to go through this thing because I want to walk you through this instead of just tell you. Somebody always telling you some stuff. Let somebody read something to you for a change. <laughs> That's right. Brother Tim, well, you know, brother, all that reading ain't got time for that. I said, you got time to go shop all day, lay out on the beach and do nothing. Go out and get drunk and pass all out. And you might not wake up for two, two, four, five hours, but you ain't got time to learn how to save yourself. If you go to church, you're supposed to learn the Bible. You ain't supposed to learn what's on my mind. I don't know what's on my mind sometime ten minutes later. 
So why should I pass something on to you that I can't remember? Now this guy was disputing with some, some other Israelites. And they could not deal with him. So they took him before the elders. And the elders asked him, look, is all this stuff they accused? Because they accused him of all kind of blasphemy. blasphemy. He's, and they won't ask all these things they say so. And then Stephen opened his mouth. This is the one that they stoned to death. Yeah. We're going to start at verse 2. Go ahead and read. And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before uh, he dwelt at Sharan. He's an eye. He, he was there. He, he showed up to him in his old country before he went to Haran. That's the new country. That's the land of Canaan. But skip down to verse 6. Verse 6 and go ahead. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land. Uh -huh. And that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. Didn't we read what God said that to Abraham? Yep. Go ahead and read. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. Uh -huh. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. Go ahead. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision. Go ahead. And so Abraham begat Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. Uh -huh. And Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat the twelve patriarchs. And these are the twelve sons of, of Israel, of Jacob. Go ahead and read. And the patriarchs moved with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt, but God was with him. So now they sold their brother into Egypt because God had a plan, sisters and brothers, to take Israel down. Skip down to verse, uh, take Israel to Egypt and so they can become a nation. Skip down to verse 14 and go ahead. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred threescore and fifteen souls. So now Joseph went out now. And became the head of Egypt. Mm -hmm. He was under the Pharaoh. But the Pharaoh told him. That he put everything on his hand. Only in the throne. He was not the head. Right. So when Joseph got together. The family in the land. And when he got through playing with his brothers. He sent and got his father. That's how Israel got down in Egypt. Go ahead and read. 16. And we'll carry. So Jacob went 15. So Jacob went. Down into Egypt and died he and our father. So everybody died down there. Joseph and his sons and Jacob. But they had a lot of children left, sisters and brothers. A lot of them. Because we can have some babies. Skip down to verse 17. And go ahead. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, uh -huh. the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Go ahead. Till another king arose which knew not Joseph. Now what promise? That his seed was going to be uh, uh, come back to this land in the fourth generation. So being the time when the promised time got clear, Israel had a whole lot of babies. Joseph died. His brothers died. And some years later, a king come up that did not know what Joseph had did for Egypt. How he had saved Egypt. And what did he do? Go ahead and read. 19. The same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil and treated our father. Uh -huh. So that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. So they tried to kill all the male babies. And they did. All they, 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 they was trying to catch. They didn't wasn't trying to catch the deliverer like the movie said. What they was trying to do is cut off the nation. Yep. How do you cut off a nation? Kill all the males. That's right. So when you have a Anybody sleep with the female, whatever the nationality of the male is, that's what the child is. That's right. So the people, the first people that tried to cut us off looked like us. Mm -hmm. Egyptian. Yep. Because the people that's called themselves over the Egyptian now are Ishmael seeds to have. They're not Egyptian. Mm -hmm. The word Egypt means black. Y'all didn't know that? <laughs> Go ahead and read. 20. In which time Moses was born uh -huh. and was exceeding fair. Go ahead. And nourished up in his father's house three months. Uh-huh. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. Ain't that something? The Lord know how to hide you, don't he? Oh, yeah. Sent Moses up in the Pharaoh's house, the man that's trying to kill the Israelite. And he, <laughs> and he probably had Moses sitting on his knee. Because grandpas do that. I used to do that when my babies was, grandbaby was young. I don't care how y'all complain yet. Yeah, come on up here, sit on the knee. <laughs> how can Moses sit on the knee if an Egyptian looked like me? And Moses looked like the people that call themselves Jews and get away with it. Right. He would say, daughter, I know, I know you mean well. 
but where'd you get this baby? You know, let's face it. See, we get away from reason when it comes in the Bible. And God said, let us reason together. What verse are we? We are 22. Uh-huh. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Uh-huh. And was mighty in words and in deeds. Go ahead. And when he was full, and when he was full 40 years old, it, he came, it came into his heart to visit his brethren, the children of Israel. See, the Lord don't send no unprepared people nowhere. Moses was trained in the most civilized civilization then, the most, uh, 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 you know, where, you know, Egypt was leading, one of the leading civilizations. God knew Moses was going to have to be a governor. He's going to have to be a king. He's going to have to know how to lead. So he put him in a position. So when he was learning all of the wisdom of Egypt, and he knew how to lead. Yeah. God don't get a person that can't read and put, make, him, put, make him a school teacher. I just, little little reasoning. Go ahead and read. What verse? 24. Uh-huh. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him and avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. So Moses went out to Egypt and whooping at one of the Israelites. He knew he was an Israelite, so he killed the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. Go ahead and read. For he supposed his brethren would have understood how that God by his hand would deliver them. They didn't have a clue. Moses always knew that he was the one that the Lord was going to deliver. His mama taught him that. The Lord showed it to him. His mama raised him until he got a certain age and took him to Egypt. But he thought that these people would understand that he was going to be the deliverer. That's right. Go ahead and read. But they understood not. Uh Uh-huh. And the next day he showed himself unto them as they strove and would have set them at one again, saying, Sirs, Uh we are brethren. Go ahead. What do ye wrong one to another? Uh Uh-huh. But he that did... His neighbor wrong thrust him away, saying, Who made thee a ruler and a judge over us? Would thou kill me as thou didst the Egyptian yesterday? Now Moses knew that Israel cannot hold a secret. These guys saw me kill the Egyptian. Moses ran. But the one that he said, Who made you? A rule and a judge over him. Lord, do stuff like this here. Skip down to verse 35 and let's see what happened. Verse 35, go ahead. This Moses whom they refused saying, who made thee a rule and a judge? The same did God send to be a ruler and a deliverer by the hand of the angel which appeared to him in the bush. The one that they rejected, that's the one that the Lord sent. Go ahead and read. He brought them out. After that, he had showed wonders and signs in the land of Egypt and in the Red Sea and in the wilderness 40 years. So now, Moses was the one that is going to deliver the people, sisters and brother. Moses is the one. Oh, yeah. So now, when Moses delivered the people and got them in the wilderness, we're going to look at some of our forefathers' behavior. Let's go in the Exodus, back to Exodus, the 16th chapter. Exodus chapter 16. Because first thing God wants you to do is believe in him, sister and brother. And he gave you reason to believe in him. But it didn't work with Israel. 16 and 1, go ahead. And they took their journey from Elam. And all the congregation of the children of Israel came into the wilderness of sin, uh-huh. which is between Elam and Sinai. And the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. So now Moses leading these people in the wilderness. Go ahead and read. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. And then people be wondering, brother boy, you know, you, you don't know what people be saying about you. I said, don't you know that is a stamp of approval? <laughs> I mean, you ain't saying nothing ain't nobody got nothing to say about you but when they're talking about you lambasting you leave my detractors alone <laughs> go ahead and read three and the children of Israel said unto them would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt uh-huh. when we sat by the flesh pots and we did eat bread to the full. Uh-huh. For ye have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Ain't that something? Yeah. They forgot that they was 
enslaved so bad until they had to make bricks without straw. Hunt straw all night and then make brick all day. All of a sudden, they act like they just left the Taj Mahal. Go ahead and read. Four. Then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. Now, see, the Lord proved you in everything he do. He's checking you out to see if you're going to do what he said. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, they shall prepare that which they bring in. Uh Uh-huh. And it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Go ahead. And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel at evening, Then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. Uh Uh-huh. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we? That ye murmur against us. He said, now what are we? You know, like people, you know, what is Moses and what is Aaron? They are like all the servants of God. They're doing what they told. Why are you going to murmur against the messenger? But you murmur against God. Instead of asking God, uh, praying to him, Lord, you know, I'm hungry. You send me something. Yeah. But they're going to murmur. Now you brought me out here to kill me with hunger. Go ahead and read. Eight. And Moses said, this shall be. When the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat and in the morning bread to the full. Uh For that the Lord hear of your murmurings which ye murmur against him. Go ahead. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. A lot of brothers, you should take take note of this. Yeah. I had somebody write me a letter, a doctor, taking issue with the circumcision. I didn't write the circumcision. I just teach about it. You should have sent it. I know she's listening. You should have sent it to heaven. I only, because what am I doing here? Okay, skip down to verse 13 and go ahead. And it came to pass that at evening the quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, the dew lay around about the host. Uh Uh-huh. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. Uh Uh-huh. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they was not what it was. They didn't know what to call it, so they just called it manna. You know, like, what manna stuff is this? We just going to call it manna. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord have given you to eat. You know, we're going to a spiritual thing here, sister and brother. See, this is what people don't understand. Once you find out how you get to the spiritual thing and what it means, now you got some understanding. 